Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Wallace Beery, Mickey Rooney, Faye Ray, and Noah Beery in Stablemates. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is the time of year for spring tonics, so tonight we've mixed you one of the best, a large dose of Wallace Berry and Mickey Rooney. It's a combination that's very pleasant to take and a sure cure for what ails you. In fact, after a week of rehearsing Wally and Mickey in the Lux Radio Theater, we're all in the spirit of spring. We bring these two lads to you tonight in a story called Stablemates, adapted from the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture in which they scored such a great hit. And with them, we present Fay Ray, who adds a decided touch of glamour to the whole occasion. We borrowed both of our leading men from MGM, where Wally has just finished The Bad Man... And Mickey has been working in Men of Boys Town with Spencer Tracy. As you might have surmised from the title, Stablemates has a horse racing background. And against that background is a drama of deep emotion. The story of a man who has lost his self-respect and a boy who helps him find it again. This is the kind of story that makes horse racing human instead of merely sport. They call it the sport of kings. But the people who get the biggest thrill out of it don't live in palaces. You'll find them at the rail at 5 a.m. when the thud of hoofs is beating a rhythm with the love in their hearts and breakfast is less important than the time on the stopwatch. We have a great cast and play tonight, but spring always promises great things in the world outdoors and right here in the Lux Radio Theater, too. But there's one thing that remains unchanged the year round, whether nature wears the flowers of summer, the gold and scarlet of autumn, the white of winter, or the green of spring. The women of America keep right on attending to their own beauty with Lux Toilet Soap. And we haven't been able to discover any season when this audience falters in its friendliness. Because in summer, winter, spring, and fall, so many of your letters begin so cheerfully alike. For instance, we listen to your plays. We look forward to hearing your stars on Monday nights. And every day, in every way, we like Lux Toilet Soap better and better. And now here's the first act of our play. The curtain rises on Stablemates, starring Wallace Beery as Doc Terry, Mickey Rooney as Jimmy Donnelly, Fay Ray as Mrs. Shepard, and Noah Beery as Donovan. Keep going, Lady Q. Keep going, baby. Don't stop this time. Show them what you've got. Give, baby, give. In the cold light of early morning, a thoroughbred flies down the back stretch of a California racetrack. This is workout time, and aboard the galloping Lady Q is Jimmy Donnelly, an exercise boy. At the rail in front of the empty grandstand, Lady Q's owner is holding a stopwatch on the workout. A jockey stands at his side, and together they watch the horse speeding into the far turn. How's she doing, Mr. Gale? I can't make any sense out of that horse. She was the best two-year-old I'd ever seen, and then she began stopping in the stretch. She cost me my shirt. Say, she's moving along nice this morning. Yeah, but wait till she hits that five-ace mark. She'll start seeing red lights on every pole. Well, she better start showing something this morning, or she'll be glue this afternoon. Come on, baby. You can do it. Don't stop now, honey. Keep moving. Keep moving, my girl. Show him, baby. Boy, she's, she's still flying, Mr. Gale. Say, this ought to be pretty good time. Yeah, here she comes. Ease her up, Jimmy, ease her up. Come on, Cliff. I want to speak to that kid. Oh, easy, baby. Easy, take it easy now. It's all over, Lady Q. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, how'd she seem? Oh, great, Mr. Gale. Did she time good? Yeah, it's a little hard to believe. She did it in 138. 138? Oh, didn't I tell you, boss? Didn't I tell you she was ready? Pipe down. You want every rail bird in the place to know it? Oh, if I thought she could do it again tomorrow, Cliff... I'd slip her into the fourth race. Oh, let me write her, boss. She knows me and likes me. We understand each other. No, I can't take any chances with you, kid. 
Hey, Cliff, do you think you can keep her moving? Why, sure, sure, if I have to tear her tail off. No, 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 Cliff, don't use a whip on her. She doesn't work with a whip. Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me how to ride but a Lady horse? Lady Q's different, Shut Cliff. up! All right, Jimmy, go take care of her. Don't feed her much tonight, nothing at all tomorrow. Give her a little water every hour or so and check her place. Yes, sir. Come on, Lady Q. Easy. Oh, that kid ought to learn to keep his mouth shut. Hiya, Mr. Gale. Yeah? What do you want? Oh, nothing much. Can I talk to you a minute? What about your horse? I'll, uh, I'll see you later, Mr. Gale. I gotta run over to the barn. Yeah, I'll meet you there. Gee, she did that mile pretty good time, Mr. Gale. Yeah, if you can call 145 good. Mm-hmm, yeah. I'd say it was closer to 138 or thereabouts. That ain't no guarantee she'll repeat. You gonna run in tomorrow? What if I am? Oh, I could insure winning. Huh? How could you? Well, a little service I've been rendering horse owners now and then. Works like magic. Yeah, you mean a shot of dope? No, thanks. My plans for the future don't include going to jail. Not a chance of that happening. Even the sly of a test don't show nothing. It's my own special formula. Only cost to use about ten bucks on her nose for me. Listen, I told you I'm not interested. But look, you can. Good morning, Mr. Gale. Oh, hello, Barney. Would you like to meet the track detective, mister? Oh, no, thanks. I'll see you around. Yeah. Well, how goes it, Mr. Gale? Oh, pretty good, Barney. Say, who was the fellow who just left here? Oh, I don't know. Just a racetrack bum. Anything wrong? No, but I hadn't seen him around here before, and something familiar about him. Uh, he just wanted the usual thing, you know, a tip. Oh, you give it to him? <laughs> I could use one myself. <laughs> Okay, lady, you better get yourself a good night's sleep. You see, there's going to be a lot of people looking at you tomorrow when you prance into the winter circle, and oh, we don't want any circles under your eyes. Does she <laughs> sleep better if you tell her bedtime story? Uh, how did you get in here? Where what do I you want? Where can I find Mr. Gale? Well, I couldn't say he's liable to be any place. What do you want with him? Oh, I got a little matter of business to talk over. Well, he'll be here tomorrow. You can see him then. Okay, I'll wait. Hey, not in here. You come back about 7 in the morning. Well, I'm a little bit strapped, buddy. It's cold out tonight. You wouldn't want me to sleep on a bench. You don't mind giving a guy a plop, do you? Yeah, tonight I do. This horse is going to run tomorrow, and strangers make her nervous. Now, she won't mind me. I don't snore nor nothing. Anyway, I'm here to help her win tomorrow. She don't need any help to win. Not much she don't. <laughs> all she needs is for all the other horses to drop dead. You get out of here, or do I have to call a stable cop? Does he know you and Seabiscuit are keeping the house here together? Now, get out of here. I'll bring you in. Oh, yeah. Put on now, that, Drake. Put it down. Now, here. Now, look, buddy. Mr. Gale wouldn't like it if I told him you was rude to me, so if you'll calm down, I'll promise to keep my mouth shut. And I'll also promise not to break every bone in your body. Now, go on, make a bed out of that straw. No, make your own bed. Well, I was talking about where you'll flop. I'm going to flop on the cop there. Hey, get off. That's where I sleep. Real hospitality is when a host gives up his own bed to his guests, like you're doing. Oh, I'll get back at you for this if I have to take... Oh, go on, pound your ear, fella, before I pound it for you. Why, you... You dirty, rotten old tramp. Now, that's perfect. That's nice coming from something like you. What do you think you're heading for, being president? <laughs> you see me? Well, you're looking at yourself 30 years from now. That's what hanging around racehorses does. Yeah, the best thing ever happened to me since I went over the hill is getting a horse to take care of. Over the hill, huh? Well, you look like something fresh out of a reformatory. St. Joseph's home for foundlings. Something that was picked out of an ash can. Yeah, well, I'm out of the ash can, see, and I'm going to stay. Oh, go on. That's enough of that schmooze for tonight. Hit the hay and listen. Don't sit up worrying about that nag winning tomorrow. She'll be eight lengths behind coming down the stretch. Ah, shut up. All right, nighty night. And there they go. It's Lady Kim in front, Betty Betty second. Liberty Bell is third, Lumber Jack is fourth. Come on, Lady Q! Keep going, baby! Come on, Lady Q! Lady Q in front. <laughs> for a while, anyway. Yeah, for good. Just watch this and see how long a long guy can be. Lady Q's gonna now come alone. That's right. Alone. After all the other horses. I can call this race with my eyes shut. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Come on, Lady Q! Watch, kid. I'll shut my eyes. I'll shut your mouth, too. 
Don't do it, honey. Don't do it, baby. Well, she's stopping. What? She's stopping. Lady Key's still leading, but, uh, well, I figure about two lengths. I should say that Lumberjack is making his move. Libertyville is out of it. Why, you, you rotten... I'm right, ain't I? Not even looking. Lumberjack should be overtaking Lady Q. They're running into the stretch now, and your sweetheart is starting to wobble. Now, you're a dirty jinx, that's what you are. She'll still take it. Captain of the section, Lady Q and Lumberjack going into the drive. It's the Lumberjack going ahead. See? Lumberjack should be leading by about a length now. Wreck your pity pat behind him. Lumberjack and pity pat head in hand. Turn on the heat, baby. Turn on the heat, lady. Please keep going. You can still win. You can still win. They're coming down the line of pity pat with a lumberjack in front. Pity pat is second. Let me run the third in our field. Both the front of the Well, yeah, yeah. Well, she quit all right. She wasn't even sick. Oh, say, why don't you shut up? Trouble that horse is, she's sick. Go on, kid. I'll take care of her, Mr. Gale. I won't need you anymore, kid. You won't need me. That's right, sorry. But wait, Mr. Gale, Lady Q and I couldn't get along. She'll get along where she's going. She won't need a swipe in a boneyard. Get her moving out of here. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What is this? You, you ain't going to shoot that horse. That's just what I am going to do. Why, you can't do that, Mr. Gale. That's that's murder. It's worse than killing a person almost. She's she's just an animal. She ain't responsible. She never wanted to do nothing to you. Nothing except rob me of every nickel I had. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You owe me six weeks' salary. That's 30 bucks. Give her to me and we'll call it square. Uh, what are you going to do with her? How do you expect to feed her or do you expect to eat her yourself? Well, that won't be no concern of yours. All right, all right. But don't let me see either of you again. Your jinx is both yanked through. Now take her out of oh, here. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gale. Thanks. Ooh, don't you worry, lady. They ain't cutting you up for glue, not while I'm around. Ooh. Hi, kid. Huh. Look, how you like my new buggy? Yeah? Where'd you steal it? She cost me heavy sugar, kid. Five bucks down. She's only got 82,000 miles on her. Practically brand new. Where'd you ever pick up five bucks? I won a bet, see? Lumberjack, 20 to one. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, that reminds me. Did you heist a buck out of my pocket this morning? Huh? A buck. A buck, you know. You took it when you cleared out. Oh. Oh, was that your... Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, just as I was leaving, I sees it right there on the doorstep, that buck. Uh Uh-huh. From its position, I couldn't tell whether it was your dough starting to blow out or somebody else's dough starting to blow in. (laughs) So being undecided in my mind... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Give one buck. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, here you are. I wouldn't jip you. Say, I bet Mr. Gale's sorry now he didn't listen to me. He'd be in the money like me if he had. Well, if he comes around asking you where I am, you tell him I got a lot of other plans now. Uh, Well, he won't be around. Lady ain't his horse anymore. Hmm? Who's stuck with her now? She's mine. No, that's too bad, son. No, never mind the cracks. Why, she's champion material if I know anything about horses. But look at that rangy neck and that short back and the straight, clean legs and... See the way her shoulders slope and that space between her eyes? Yeah, she sounds like money in the bank, but she's sick. You keep harping on that. How do you mean sick? Here, come here. I'll, I'll show you. Hey, hey, get away from her. She don't like strangers. She'll kick you. No, I'll take a chance. Come on, baby. Give me your hook. Atta girl. Give it here. Say, <laughs> you seem to know how to hammer. What are you What are you looking at her hoof for? Yeah, uh-huh. That's what I thought. Put it down, baby. Well? You heard of Thunderbolt, ain't you? Who ain't heard of him? Holds the all-time record for a mile and a quarter, huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, the way I figure it, she's got the same thing he had. What same thing? When Thunderbolt was a two-year-old, why, he had a tumor just as big as a marble right under the left front hoof. Every time he put his leg down, it hurt him like I think it hurts her. (laughs) Then how'd he win all those stakes? Well, there, there was a vet around there about that time. Young fella, smart as a whip. Best bet in the country. They got mixed up with some gamblers and got into a beat. Yeah, so so what? Well, so this vet, he he operated on Thunderbolt. It's a pretty tough operation, too. Tough? How? How do you mean? Well, first he removed the hoof. And then right there was that growth. 
Now the trick was slicing it off without injuring the nerve. If he cut one thousandth of an inch too much, a hundred thousand dollar horse would have had to be sent to the glue factory. Well, did, did he do it? He did it. He nursed the animal through the fever that always follows an operation like that, and next year, Thunderbolt won more money than the owner could count. Well, do you think it hurts Lady Q just to walk? No, how's it? feel when you got a pebble in your shoe. Uh, look, tell me, where's that vet now? Oh, that vet? Yeah. Oh, he's dead. Well, I'll be moving along. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Where, where are you going? Oh, I'm, I'm going over and get a beer or something. Oh, I, I think I'll trail along too, huh? No, 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 nothing doing. They don't sell them to miners. Well, I can drink sarsaparilla. Oh, guys. That's the sound of that makes me sick at my stomach. Here you are, Terry. Chaser? Yeah, thanks. Here, yours to you. Uh, make mine sarsaparilla, huh? Coming up. Say, I thought I told you to beat it. Yeah, I know, I know, but I want to talk to you. How are you making out, Doc? What'd you call me? That bet you were telling me about. You're him. Shut up. Where'd you get such an idea in your head? You got a set of vet's tools in your pack. Oh, that ain't true. I seen them. I went through your stuff this morning. You know, going through a man's things is illegal? Well, let's say that they was on the doorstep starting to blow in or blow out. I forget which. I don't... Oh, I, I won them from a fella in a crap game. I'm saving them to hawk sometimes when things is real bad. Ah, uh, that's baloney. They're yours. You know too much about horses to be just an ordinary guy. Well, I've been around horses. I've been following the races all my life. And you knew what was wrong with Lady Q the first time you seen her yesterday morning. Oh, no, I was kidding. You knew she had a tumor on her hoof just like Thunderbolt. Well, I was lying about Thunderbolt. He never had all he oh, had. Oh, no why nothing. don't you fake? Hey, oh, he had. You go hire a home. Keep away from me, kid. Go on, jump in that sarsaparilla and drown. Yeah, well... Well, thinking it over, I guess I ought to apologize to you for calling you a vet and saying those tools were yours. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, the reason I thought that was because I got a lot of respect for vets. Yeah, they'll be pleased to hear that. You know why? Because they love animals, and a guy that loves animals must be a right guy. Not the way you feel? Well, sure, animals are swell. They need you. They never hurt you, and guys, they love you to death. Yeah, and they never ask who you are or what you are, do they? Uh, you bet, you bet, and... And another reason why I respect vets is, well, being able to tell just what's wrong with an animal is hard. Well, when a man goes to a doctor, he sticks out his tongue and he says, ah, and then he says, I got a pain here, a pain there. It makes it a cinch to cure him. But an animal can't tell where it hurts. Positively, vets is as great as doctors. You bet your pants they are. And that's what I'm going to be someday, a great vet. Does it take a lot of studying? Yes, it, it takes... Oh, how should I know? Okay. Okay, Doc. Hey, here, here, George. Dry that thing careful. Oh, sit tight. I'm doing okay. Yeah, you're a good kid, but you're dumb. Look, how did you cure Thunderbolt's fever after the operation? I, I cure him? Uh huh. Oh, I sat up with him for two nights, and I put ice and whole mud on him. That's how. I drive me someplace where I can get another drink. Well, that's what I'm doing. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. Where? where? Hey, this is the stables. What's the idea of bringing me back here? Come on inside. Somebody will see us. Let me go. go Let me Nobody's supposed to be in the stables Let go of my arm, I go said. On Let me go. Hey, what's the idea? Doc, do it for me. Will you, Doc? Do what? Will you... Will you operate on Lady Q? Oh, Will you... get out of my way. Get I'll, it. I'll pay you. How much do you want to do it? Oh, about $2,000. All right, I'll get it. I'll steal it. I mean it. Doc. Well, while you're at it, you better steal a lot more. My price has gone up. 5000 bucks. Yeah. Ah, uh, sure. That operation probably wouldn't be worth five cents. I wouldn't let you do it even if you wanted to. All right, that's okay with me. An old gin-soaked has been like you. Why, you'd probably kill her if you got close enough to blow your breath on her. The best vet in the country. Smart as a whip. Oh, that's supposed to be you? Boy, that's a laugh. Ha yeah, ha! I got a good mind to bust you in the nose. Ah, uh, you ain't got a good mind. Look who thinks he can do an operation. Cutting within a thousandth of an inch of a nerve. With those hands trembling like jelly? Ha ha, boy, you're killing me. Killing ain't, ain't a bad idea. Ah, uh, you couldn't operate a slot machine. 
You're a has-been. You're all washed up. I could do that operation as good now as I did it oh. 20 years ago. Oh. I'll show you if I'm a has-been. I'll operate on that old cripple. Oh, Doc. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're pretty cute. That's the idea. Think you can get me mad enough to fix up that old horse. <laughs> they almost work. Oh, gee, Doc. Why won't you help us? Why should I? That horse ain't nothing to me, and you're even less. But, Doc, you got a chance to do something great. She was good once. You can make her good again. Doc, it, it's like somebody's a big shot. See, he's riding on top of the world, and then he gets a bad break, and he goes down. Then along comes a good guy like you, Doc, and gives this fellow a helping hand and puts him on his feet again. Gee, if you've ever had a tough break in your life, you ought to understand something about the break she's having. That growth must be killing her with pain, like you said, but... But she'll run her heart out for me if I ask her. I guess that's what you call it, thoroughbred. Only thoroughbreds got great hearts like that. And if, and if we don't help her, hey, Doc, we ain't got any at all. Shut up, you. Run over that drugstore on the boulevard and get me some chloroform and knock her off with. A great big can, a lot of bandages. Oh, yes, sir. I'll cure your horse. I ain't forgotten the disrespectful way you talk to me, though. After I'm through, I'm going to give you the worst liquor you ever had. I'm going to beat up on you so you'll remember it the rest of your life. Get going. Now. Oh, yes, sir. How we doing, Doc? Well, she's, she's out now. Keep that sponge under her nose. Yes, sir. Hand me them rubber gloves. There you are. There it is. There's the hoof. There's the growth, just like I said. Gee, Doc, it'll be all right then. You can fix her. <laughs> Put that light out quick. Everybody out? It's the watchman. He's making the rounds. Everybody out? Everybody out? It's okay now. He's gone. Turn out that light. But we gotta have light. We can't leave her like that. You wanna land me in jail? Somebody catches me doing this without a license, I go to camp. Why? You ain't doing nothing wrong. I got a good mind to scram out of here. What am I doing this for anyway? Gee, Doc, you can't. How do you expect a man to work in the dark? I, I got a flashlight here. That'll help. Look. That bat will go dead any minute. Well, maybe. Maybe it'll last. All right. I'll just stand over there and keep it turning where I tell you. Head, Doc. What are you stopping for? I, I, I can't do it. I'm forgetting how. You can't stop now. You can do it. You're a great bat. You've done this before. You've made a champion out of a cripple. You can do it if, if you just try. Come on, Doc. Oh no, I, I need a drink. Well, I'll get it. Only, only don't stop, please, Doc. Well, well, Doc. I done it. I done it. I never touched the nerve at all. Oh, gee, gee, Doc. Now we've got to make preparations for fighting that fever. You get all the blankets you can. Get a lot of cold water ready. Dig up some cold mud. Cool. I, I got the mud here, here, Doc. put it on her neck. Here, give me. Here. Oh. Doc. Doc. Doc, what's the matter? Get up, Doc. Listen, you can't pass out on me this way. I... I, I, I don't know what to do. She'll die. Wake up. Wake up. Quiet, lady. Quiet. I'll take care of you. I'll fix you, lady. Oh, let her live. Let her live, Lord. I, I don't know the words, but I'm asking you to let her live. She's so brave and beautiful. She's all I got. So if it's okay with you, please, please let her live. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars Wallace Berry, Mickey Rooney, Faye Ray, and Noah Berry will bring us Act Two of Stable Mate. And now I'm going to find out just how good an observer Sally here really is. Oh, Sally, tell me, have you ever been in Claudette Colbert's dressing room over at uh, Paramount? I certainly have, Mr. Ruick. And you should see the simply gorgeous negligee she was wearing. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't miss that, Sally. But did you notice what soap she keeps there? Oh, why, yes. Lux toilet soap, of course. And you know, Mr. Ruick, 
Claudette Colbert says she just never neglects her daily Lux Soap Active Lather Facials. Thank you, Sally. And now, uh, for the benefit of those women who haven't yet tried them, will you explain exactly how to take an Active Lather Facial? <laughs> My goodness, Mr. Ruick, I'll be glad to do that. Because Active Lather Facials with gentle Lux Toilet Soap are such a wonderful beauty aid, I think every woman should know about them. They're easy and so quick, too. You just pat Lux Toilet Soap's creamy lather lightly into your skin, rinse with warm water, a dash of cool, and pat gently to dry. Then you'll notice that your skin feels softer and smoother, looks so fresh and nice. Well, it's really very simple, and yet every woman who uses this care regularly finds it a wonderful beauty aid, a real help in keeping skin smooth and lovely all the time. Yes, Claudette Colbert, like other famous screen stars, uses this daily Lux Toilet Soap Care. Active lather facials give her priceless complexion the protection it needs. Active lather is thorough, removes stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt, yet it's gentle as can be. Now, if you'll try Lux Soap Active Lather Facials for 30 days, I know you'll find they really work. Give your skin this care as a quick beauty pickup during the day, always at bedtime. Then see if you don't feel like joining the famous stars and the millions of lovely women everywhere who say... Active lather facials are a wonderful beauty aid. A wonderful aid in keeping skin soft and smooth, the way it ought to be. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of Stablemates, starring Wallace Beery as Doc Terry and Mickey Rooney as Jimmy Donnelly. Jimmy's prayer was answered. As the long night ended, Lady Q rallied. Her fever broke, and the doc knew that she'd pull through. It's a few weeks later... In a dilapidated horse trailer, Lady Q bounces away from the stable area behind Doc's $5 jalopy. Doc is at the wheel, and beside him, Jimmy is in high spirits. Are, are you sure, Doc, the seawater treatment you're going to give her, is that what you gave Thunderbolt too? Yeah, that's it. And, and you're going to run her along the beach in the water, huh? And that's going to make her all well again, huh? Will you quit asking me the same thing over and over again? She grew a new hoof like I said she would, didn't she? Oh, sure she did, Doc. That makes an old has-been out of me, don't it, huh? Oh. <laughs> With hands shaking like jelly. <laughs> you better get set for that beating coming your way. That's one I owe you. I'm going to pay off with interest. <laughs> Doc, look at her go. Oh, you lady, run it, baby, run it. We're a couple of flying fish. Woo-hoo! Doc, you sleep? Mm-hmm. Uh, what? I, I was just thinking... We got maybe another man of war, ain't we? Yeah. The lady will be the death of more bookies than you can bury in an afternoon. We'll camp out here on the beach a couple of more days. She ought to be fine by then. Okay, Doc. I'm ready. Ready for what? Come on, give me that beating. I guess I deserve it now. Oh, no, not now. I got to get some sleep. Oh, ain't you gonna? Sure I am, but I got to get some sleep first. I ain't going to beat up on you while I'm tired. Uh, okay, Doc. But any time you say, you just let me know, huh? Gee. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a drink. Doc, someday I'm going to pay you for what you've done for Lady Q. Any price you say. Oh, sure, sure. When I read in the papers about a cup in a race, I'll send you my bill, huh? Just, uh, you send me a bill? <laughs> ain't you going to Burlington with us? What for? Oh, well, horse is okay, ain't she? You don't need me no more. But, but, well, I, I figured we were sort of partners. No, no, I, I don't hook up with nobody. We'd only get in each other's hair like dandruff. Oh, maybe we wouldn't, Doc. Maybe it'd be natural for us to be together, like like ham and eggs or pork and beans. Or and... frankfurters and sauerkraut, huh? Well, you could be her trainer, Doc. If anybody can make a top horse out of her, it's you. No, no, uh-uh, no, it wouldn't work out. <laughs> I can't be hanging around a kid like you. I ain't dependable. 
Someday you'd wake up and find out I'd skipped out. But, Doc, you can't walk out on us. We're, we're going to make big dough together. If Lady Q wins, maybe I can go to school to be a vet. You serious about that? I sure am. I want to be a great vet, Doc, like you. Well, maybe you will be. Oh, I'm going to get some sleep. Good night. Then are, are we sticking together? Yeah, well, we'll try a little while anyway. Mm, okay, Pop. Good night. Hey. What's that you call me? Pop, got any objections? No, no. I don't care what you call me, so long as it ain't disrespectful. Say, it might not be a bad idea if we made it legal. Made what legal? You being my pop. I got no folks, you got no kids. Oh, what would that get us? Well, it'd make us closer partners, sort of. You mean you'd you really like having me for your old man? Yeah, I, I would. Well, give me your myth. I, Tom Terry, do hereby adopt this kid as my legal son for better or for worse. Till death do us part. How uh, you say it? I, Jimmy... Oh, I ain't sure of my last name. Ah, uh, it'll be Terry in a minute. Okay. I adopt you, Tom Terry, for my legal father. For keeps. Yeah, that does it. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm your old man. Now, here's the setup. We'll put Lady Q in a race and make some dough. But after that, you're going to quit fooling around races and get yourself an education so you can be a vet. Gee, you know, I'm a lucky guy. Yeah, well, I hope so. Say, you think we ought to try and make the racetrack pop? You know... Pop sounds good even out here in the rain. <laughs> sure, we can make it. It's only about 50 miles. Oh, oh. What happened? Ah, uh, uh, that's it. I think we blew a few. I heard something drop underneath. Must have been the drive shaft. Yeah. Well, maybe when the rain stops, we can get her going again. No, no. I can tell rigor mortis when I see it. They don't build nothing to last these days. Say, there's a barn over there, Pop. Maybe if I asked up in the house, they'd let us use the barn to sleep in, yeah, huh? Yeah, they, they might say no. We better just use it without asking nobody. Come on, get Lady Q. Come on, Lady First thing we got to do, we got to get a dry. Get them sacks over there, Jimmy. Hand them to me. Oh, there's some oats in one of them here. Well, you feed her while I rub her down, huh? You, you think she'll catch cold, Pop? No, she'll be okay. We keep her warm. Go on, pile some more straw on that stall. Okay. Down, lady. Come on, get down, down. Careful. Who's ever in there? Oh. Stand still. Uh -oh. I got a chop. Look out, Pop. Here, here, watch out, lady, with that gun. Don't point it so high. Don't make a move or I'll shoot. So, chicken thieves, huh? Oh, oh no, ma'am. We wouldn't do anything like that. We we just brought the horse in there out of the rain. Oh, your horse thieves, too, huh? Oh, you got things all wrong. That horse belongs to us legal. We ain't the kind that steals things. What about them oats? Them sacks I was saving and trampling down the straw and goodness knows what else. I'm going to call the sheriff. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that, ma'am. Oh. oh, we'll pay for any damage we've done. Oh, yes? Well, I figure it comes to about $3. Come on, cash. Well, at this moment, we happen to be out of cash, but... That's what I expected. Well, you wouldn't put us in jail, ma'am. I can see you're a kind woman. If that's what you see, you need glasses. Well, couldn't we work it off, ma'am? We'll do anything. Why, look at my pop. Yeah. We could do the work of any two men. Yeah. Hey, here. Stop that. Take it easy. Take it easy. He looks like a tub of lard to me. <clears throat> Very well. You can plow a field for me tomorrow, all three of you. Don't know whether I should be doing this. I certainly don't like the looks of you. Well, you can't always judge by appearances. We've been out in the rain. Mm. Say, I bet you look 100% different when you're all spruced up, huh? <laughs> I look just the same, wet or dry. I'll call you at five in the morning and I'll expect you to be ready. Hey, wait, wait, lady, wait. Uh, what's hey. the matter? She's locked us in. We're trapped. Uh, then we got to stay and plow that field? Yeah, yeah, I guess so, no. Doc, we, we can't hitch Lady Q to a plow. It'd kill her. No. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Hey, wait, I heard of people hitching themselves to plows. What? Oh, you're too little. Uh, that's what I thought. What we need is a, is a big guy. Uh, strong and, yeah, you but know, like... Uh, who could... Hey, here, here. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Bull, Doc! Bull! Oh, you're doing great, Doc! Wait, wait Keep pulling! <laughs> wait a minute, I... I gotta rest, I gotta rest. Oh, okay, okay, take it easy a while. How you feeling? Well, I'm still breathing. <laughs> Boy, with difficulty. Yeah, it's this country air. It gives me pep. The uh, air ain't bad. Hey... Maybe there's something to this early rising and working out of doors. I'll say there is. Oh, look, Pop, look at Lady Q over there. Kick him up, Lady, kick him up. Oh, she's having a great time, ain't she? Hey, that's swell for her. Say, here's what I think we should do. Instead of entering her just in any race, we'll put her straight off into a stakes event. You know that Brewster handicap that they're running on the opening day? Why, you think she's good enough, Pop? Yeah, I think she is. But... But we need an entry fee for that. Yeah, 75 bucks. What do we do? Do we stick up a bank? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. I got away with women. Now, I think I could talk uh, that Mrs. Picklepuss into letting us work here. You know, this farm could certainly use a good simonizing job. Pop, I, uh, I think you had a thought. <laughs> That couldn't be a uh, mince pie, ma'am. It could be, and it is. That's my favorite pie. Mm -hmm. Mine, too. Even if it wasn't, that's all you'd get tonight. Ma'am, you know, I've been thinking. It must be kind of lonely for a woman living out here all alone. Don't you find it so, ma'am? Got a canary and a shotgun. Company and protection. All I need. Well, don't you... Ever feel the need of human companionship? You know, man was not made to live alone, and that goes for women, too. I don't call having had five husbands living alone, exactly. Five? Five husbands? That's right. One at a time. They all passed on. Mr. Flanders, right in the middle of spring planting. No. Yeah. Well, it ain't hard to understand your success with men, Mrs. Flanders. <laughs> A handsome little filly like you. <laughs> I bet you was a pretty little thing. Never was, ain't now, and never will be. Now, suppose you quit buttering me and start on the bread. And if what you're getting around to is that you'd like to stay and do some work for me, well, I'll pay you for it. Oh, gee, thanks. Sixty-two, sixty-three... Sixty-four bucks. Say, Pop, that ain't bad for a month's work. Yeah, what you better do is to hitchhike up to Burlington and get an entry blank. I'll race the rest of the dough somehow. Go on, beat it. Starting this minute. Gee, uh, it'll be a great day, won't it, Pop? Yeah, when she prances into that winner's circle and gets the wreath. Oh, that'll be fine, too. But I was thinking of the day when, when they hand out those vet diplomas and you're sitting there. And... Right in the front <laughs> row. <laughs> the guy with that square hunk of cardboard on his bean says, Dr. James Terry, come up here and get yours. And if you try real hard, maybe you'll be half the vet your old man. Is. Oh, go on. Get <laughs> out of here. Go on. Okay, here's that entry blank, son. But what you're going to do with it, I don't know. This is a horse race. Oh, thanks, sir. Oh, we've got a horse. Well, good luck, kid. Thanks. Hi, Jimmy. How's it going? Well, if it ain't Sherlock Holmes himself. How's the snooping business, Barney? Good enough. How's the stable boy racket? Oh, I, I wouldn't know. I'm an owner now. Remember Gail's horse, Lady Q? Yeah, the shortstop. Well, she quit stopping long ago. She's mine now. We're entering her in the handicap. Great stuff. But who's we? Me and my old man. Didn't know you had a father. Oh, say, ever run into that guy again? The one who was hanging around Gail's stable one day? Well, Barney... I that... finally remembered who he was. Looked him up in the water file at headquarters. Doc Terry, all right. What? Oh, that's his name. Thomas Terry. Used to be a vet. He owes the state about eight years. Haven't bumped into him, have you? Why, uh, no, no. What's he, what's he wanted for? You remember a horse called Grand Sheik? Sure. One of the greatest animals that track's ever known. Well, Booze got Terry, and he mixed in with a bunch of grifters who wanted Grand Sheik to lose. So they got Terry to do the old sponge act. Well, Barney, Booze makes a guy do funny things. Yeah, this wasn't funny. He put too much on that sponge. The horse dropped dead in the middle of the race. Well, we nabbed Terry, and he got a one to a five year rap. Then then he served his time. Uh -huh. He skipped bail. Oh. Well, uh, <laughs> I've got to shove on now. Well, that's the opening day. Uh, maybe not, Barney. Thinking it over, maybe her uh, hoof ain't right yet. Maybe it's uh, too soon after operation. Operation on her hoof? Who did it? 
Uh, oh, uh, oh, well, a better guy I found, young fella, he's... Perry did a marvelous operation on a horse once. Oh, this wasn't anything like Thunderbolts. I didn't mention the horse's name. How did you know about it? I I read it someplace. I thought you told me you had no folks. Where did you find your father? I met him accidentally, like. Hadn't seen him in years, had you? Not since I was a baby. Then how did you recognize each other? Well, that strawberry mark on your oh, left shoulder? Take your hands off of me. Why are you lying to me, Jimmy? I ain't lying. I don't know a thing. Go do your own gumshoe work. But lay off me, see? Lay off! Are you here? Oh, where'd he go, lady? Gee, lady, we're in trouble. If Pop goes near that track, Donovan will nab him, sure. We can't let a great man like him go to jail no matter what he done. There ain't nobody like him in the whole world. Oh, what are we going to do? Jimmy, Oh, Jimmy. Pop. Come on, son. Gee, I'm glad you're back. Now, hurry up. What's the matter? Throw your toothbrush in there and whatever else you've got. We're scrambling out of here fast. Was something wrong? Yeah, there's plenty wrong. Remember I told you I had a way with women? Yeah. Well, it's gotten out of hand. That widow wants to marry me tomorrow whether I like it or not. Come on, get going. She's liable to be here any minute. Now, wait, Pop. I wouldn't do nothing hasty. That, that sounds pretty good. Listen, it ain't you she's marrying. It's me. Think I want to settle down here in this hole with a five-time loser? It ain't safe. That's just what it is, Pop. Safe. I, I mean, well, you'll be took care of the rest of your life. I'll bet she's got a lot of dough socked away. No, I ain't married for money. Not her anyway. What about racing Lady Q and getting the dough for your schooling? Oh, we don't have to race her. We don't need no dough. Why, you could teach me. I'll bet you know more than all the vet schools put together. Listen, two things I ain't. Teacher and a husband. So shut your face and let's get packed. We can make Burlington before morning. Pop, we ain't going to Burlington. I don't want to race, Lady Hugh. I, I don't even want to be a vet. So long as I'm your old man, well, so long as we stick together, you'll do what I tell you to. Now, that ain't going to work out either. What ain't going to work out? Oh, sticking together. I've been thinking it over, too. You gone out of your head? Well, I've decided that you and me were a lot different, see? We, we don't belong together. What? Well, you said at the beach we'd give this partnership a try. Well, we've tried it out, and I don't think it's worked out. It ain't worked out. No, it ain't. I suppose you think because you've done a little work on Lady Q, you own half of her. Well, you don't. You're not cutting in on any dough she's going to earn. You better stay here with a widow and cut in on her dough. And I'm, I'm unadopting this right here and now. Here's the dough we earned. Here, you can keep it. Oh, you can't mean that. We said till death do us part. Oh, that don't mean nothing to me either. You ain't going to Burlington. Well, where you're going, I'm going. No, to... you're not, see? Jimmy, what's happening you to you? You and me, we're through. We're through. Listen, you see this belt? I'm your pop, and if I have to use it on oh, you... Oh, give me that belt. You ain't using anything on me, and if you don't let me alone, I'll, I'll use it on you. Now, listen. Get, get away from me. Oh. There. And I told you. I warned you, didn't I? Maybe that'll show you that I meant it. We're through. Okay, kid. Okay. That's the way you want it. So long, Jimmy. Oh, gee. Gee, Pop. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Wallace Berry, Mickey Rooney, Faye Ray, and Noah Berry, will return in Act Three of Stablemates. And now, while we're waiting, here's young Betty Barton, who's going to be a bride in June. Betty, just look at all those things. And that's real lace, too. Nothing but the best, too. After all, it's the only trousseau I'll ever have, I hope. Silly. But, Betty, what's that simply divine sachet? It smells wonderful. Sachet? Oh. <laughs> look there, Sue, underneath that white satin slip. Why, for goodness sake, that's a cake of Lux toilet soap. Of course. Don't tell me you haven't found out about that little trick, Sue. You just put a few cakes of Lux soap in among your hankies and lingerie and things, and... It makes the most wonderful sachet. Such a nice, delicate perfume. Mmm, isn't it good? Mmm, it certainly is. I'm going to get some extra cakes of Lux soap right away, Betty, and put them in the house. Something tells me Betty Barton's sure to make a lovely bride and a clever wife. You see, Betty's what we call a Lux girl. She buys this fine white soap several cakes at a time and uses it regularly every day. Yes, Betty's a Lux girl. She depends on Lux Toilet Soap for help in keeping that smooth, young complexion of hers always at its loveliest. She uses Lux Soap as a bath soap, too, because she knows active lather will make her sure about daintiness, sure of skin that's really fresh, perfumed with a delicate fragrance that clings. Betty's so fond of that perfume, as you've seen, she's delighted with the way she can use Lux Toilet Soap as a sachet, too. Yes, Betty's a Lux girl. A clever girl. 
A girl who makes men say, Gosh, Betty, I love to be near you. Your skin is so sweet. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Stablemates, starring Wallace Beery as Doc Terry, Mickey Rooney as Jimmy, and Faye Ray as Mrs. Shepard. <laughs> The day before the Berlin racetrack opens, finds Jimmy in the jockey club. For it's here that owners come to enter their horses. At the entry steward's desk, Jimmy waits his turn. His face betrays his anxiety and his determination. Well, good morning, son. Hello. Say, is there any way a fella could get credit in this joint? <laughs> credit? Well, why not? Suppose a fella's got a great horse that belongs in a handicap, but he ain't got no money for the entry fee. What's wrong with letting him run her and then you guys take it out of her winnings? Well, <laughs> there's always the small possibility of the animal losing. Not a chance in the world with this horse. Good morning, Mr. Oh, Taylor. Excuse me. Well, hello, Mrs. Shepard. Very happy to see you again. You know my trainer? Of course. How are you, Pete? How are you? Well, Mrs. Shepard, what can we do for you? <laughs> well, you can... You can give me your condition book for this meet and point out the soft spots in it so my horses can pick up some worthwhile stakes. The I'm a poor woman this year. <laughs> After all the money Miracle Lad made for you, she gives it away faster than she gets it. <laughs> now, here's a condition book, Mrs. Shepard. Thanks. Uh, we're going to work Miracle Lad in a little while. Come out and walk. He's the greatest piece of horse flesh you ever peeped at. I'll race my horse against him anytime, anywhere. What? All right, son. Run along now. Wait, Stuart. Are you an owner? <laughs> yes, ma'am, and... My horse is as good as any at this meet. You bring on Miracle Lad and she'll show him. Well, I might do that sometime, but not right away. You see, he's just been shipped down from the farm. He's had a long, tiring journey. Well, I I walked Lady Q 23 miles last night to get here, so <laughs> that makes us even. Oh, uh, Mrs. Shepard, I don't mean to be fresh or anything, but would you do me a favor? Would you let me work Lady Q out with Miracle Lad? Well, I don't know. Do it? It's up to you, Mrs. Shepard. All right. We'll do it. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Shepard. Two o'clock. We'll be there. Don't worry, ma'am. Hey, hey, what's the idea there? Keep back. Go on, let that hot house or get out. I get back, you mug. Get back. This is Miracle Ash. This is Lady Q. Ah! 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 Come on, Miracle Ash. Come on, Miracle Ash. Come on, whoever you are. What's the name of that other horse, Pete? Lady Q. Come on, Lady Q. Come on, Lady Q. That horse sure can run, ma'am. Can she, though? Come on, lady. Well, that looks like a photograph finish, Pete. Yeah. Let's go speak to that boy. I want to ask him a few questions. Atta girl, lady. That's showing him, baby. Hello there. Oh, hello, Mrs. Shepard. Hey, young fella, where'd you get that horse? You want to sell her? Oh, there ain't enough money in the world to buy her. I don't blame you. She's grand. Oh, yes, ma'am. I I hope you ain't sore. I mean, about running a miracle lad into the ground like that. (laughs) You can't be sore at a racehorse, son. Then will you do something for me, ma'am? Will you enter her under your own colors? I can't raise the fee, you see. Well, uh... Well, I I got a reason for wanting to run, Lady Q. I I owe a fellow some dough for an operation he did, and I think he might be needing it pretty bad. All right, uh... I'll enter her on one condition. What's that? That none of my horses have to run against her. Oh, oh, oh uh, the Brewster tomorrow is the perfect spot for that, her. That's the race we'll give her. And and I've got a rider, ma'am. All right. Put her in our barn, Pete. Stalls well, son. You know our stables? Yes, sir. Well, son, how do you like your riding silks? Gee, they're awful pretty, Mrs. Shepard. I... I ain't never seen it with so many colors. I look like a rainbow with pants on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've come home in front a lot of times the last few years. They'll come home again today, won't they, son? You bet they will, ma'am. By the way, what's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy what? Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Terry. All right, Jimmy Terry. Good Mr. luck. P- Mr. Pizza. Yes, Joe? That horse, sir. That lady Q, she ain't gonna run today. Oh, what's the matter? She lame, sir. Lame? Why, she can't be lame. She holding her foot up, all sore on the knee. Her foot? Let's take a look. Now, don't worry, Jimmy. Pete will know what to do. Come on. How does she look, Pete? What is it? Can't tell, ma'am. Might be anything. Now nah, it's too bad, young fella. If she can't run, I'd better go over to the steward's office and scratch her. I... I guess so. I'm sorry, kid. I'm sorry, too, Jimmy, but... Don't take it so hard. We'll have her fixed up and run her some other time. The meet's just begun. Well, she ought to run today. Some other time it'd be too late. Today's when she should be running. She can run today. Doc, Doc, get out of here. Who is this, Jimmy? Her hoof's a little bit tender, ma'am. That's what I figured might happen, so I brought along a bar shoe with me. That'll protect it. With this on, she'll run the pants off of anything of the race. 
If you don't mind, I'll just go to work now. It won't take me long. Who are you, please? Well, I used to take care of her for that kid there. Well, well, if she's going to be all right, I'd better stop Pete. Thank you very much. Well, that's okay, ma'am. Come on, lady. Let's see that hook. You get out of here. I'll go just as soon as I fix it. Never her mind her. You get out of here now. Not till I'm through. I take an interest in my patients. She'll run when she gets this thing on. I don't care if she runs or not. Now get out, I tell you. If you're scared that I'm going to cut in on her winnings, why quit worrying? I ain't bother neither of you again. Who cares about her winnings? You got to leave her before that detective nabs you. What are you talking about? That detective Donovan. He told me all about it when I when I came here for the application. Poppy's hanging around watching me just so he can get you. Donovan told you that. That's why you did what you, what you did. What other reason? I had to keep you away from here. Oh, I'd rather cut off my arm than to hit you, Pop. I thought that you were sore at me. Pop, look. After Lady wins, we'll have a pretty good stake. You beat it out of here right now. See? I thought you hated me and didn't want me around no more. Will you listen? Then I'll meet you and we'll, we'll get ourselves a little joint someplace and they won't ever find you. I kept on wondering and wondering what I'd done to make you so Pop, sore. Pop, we ain't got time to talk. Go back to the widow's staller and I'll meet you there in a couple of days. Let your beard grow. Oh, gee, wouldn't I look swell with whiskers? Oh, you'd look okay to me. Now get going and keep off the main roads. Son, I'd like awful much to watch you win that race. Ain't you got any sense, Pop? I'm telling you that Donovan is here at the track. Oh, I could stand someplace where he wouldn't see me. Pop, if you don't get out of here right away, I, I won't even race her. Okay, son, okay. I'm going. I don't think so, oh. Doc. Oh, gee, Pop. Well, uh, unless you meant maybe that you're coming with me... Hello, Barney. You ready now? I guess so. There's a train in a few minutes. Barney, let him alone. Please let him alone. Oh, easy, son. You you better get going. You got a race to ride. I can't, Bob. Oh, sure I you can. can. No, sure Bob, you can. Please. Go on. Do you hear me? You got a ride. <laughs> Keep going. We've got a train to catch. Wait a minute, Barney. You mind if we watch the race? That's my kid riding. Your kid? Don't make me laugh. It's my kid, I tell you. It's the way I feel about him anyway. What do you say, Barney? Let me watch him win, will you? Okay. Get over there to the rail. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, ride it, Jimmy. Come on, Lady Q. Run for Jimmy. It's Jimmy, Lady. For the kid. Run for the kid, please. Did it. He won. Gee, he's a great kid. Yeah. You ready, Doc? Yeah, all set. Let's go. Jimmy, wait! I can't, Mrs. Jimmy. I gotta get out of here, please. Jimmy, what's wrong? Something's happened to my father. Your father? That was him that brought the bar shoe for Lady Q. He's in oh, trouble, Mrs. Shepherd. What sort of trouble? There was a detective after him. He was taking him to the train. Detective? Hey, young fella, there's a $2,500 purse waiting for you. Come on, get I'll it. let it wait. Help me, ma'am, will you please? Of course, Jimmy. Come on, I've got my car outside. How long's the train stop here, Barney? Just to take on passengers. Okay, let's get on. Bob! Bob! Hurry up, wait, Barney. Wait. No, no, Bob. I'm going with you. No, no, I ain't that foolish talk. How can you be going with me? You ain't invited. Well, I'll get myself invited. I'll do something so they'll send me up there. I'll still... You ain't going to leave me behind. Jenny, Jenny, don't. Don't let me alone. I'm going. Oh, stop that foolish kid talk. You got things to do. Uh, Why, you're all set. Oh, I don't want none of that. I I want only to be with you. If you're going to jail, then I'm going. Now, say, listen. You think jail's tough? Wait till you start going to school and vet college. Why, I figure you'll be in for five years anyway. Oh, Bob, Doug, serious. I'm serious. Listen, Sonny, your stretch won't be over until June 1946. My rap will be finished in March of that year, so 
I'll be waiting on the steps when they spring oh, you. Gee, Bob. I'll see he gets on all right, Mr. Terry. You see, he's wearing my silk now. Thanks, oh, ma'am. So long, Jimmy. Goodbye, Bob. Goodbye. Not goodbye. Just so long. Bye, Bob. So long, son. Jimmy and the doc seem to have the future fixed up pretty well, but the curtain falls on stable mates. Now Wallace Beery, Fay Ray, and Mickey Rooney are coming back to the microphone. Ah, thank you, CB. <laughs> you know, we all had a great time here this week, didn't we, Mickey? You bet, Mr. Berry. You're too big to argue with anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that, Fay? I bring this kid up from a pup, and now I can't even get a little argument with him. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Mickey. Make him happy. Argue with him. Not me. How can I argue with a fellow that's been in pictures 25 years? He must be right. Why, Mr. Berry has been an electrician, a, a cameraman, and a director besides being an actor. And I want to learn a lot about directing myself. Mm, take my advice and stick to acting, Maggie. You'll have fewer headaches. <laughs> Speaking of director's headaches, Mr. DeMille, when are you going to decide on a cast for Reap the Wild Wind? Now, I decided on a leading man this afternoon, Faye. And it's Ray Milland. He joins John Wayne, Bob Preston, and Lynn Overman in the cast. Now all I need is two leading ladies and about 400 other people, and we'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Mr. DeMille, if you'd rather be an actor yourself, I'll give you a part in the first picture they let me direct. Mm, that's a bargain. <laughs> uh, I don't want a part. Just give me a seat on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let him kill the deal, Mickey. I'll take direction without a word. Besides, Wally's no man to talk about that. I had to tie him down once. Oh, listen, CB, why, why must you bring that up? Well, now, I'd like to hear about that. <laughs> well, something over 20 years ago, I had Wally in a picture. And in one close-up, I couldn't keep him in range of the camera, so we just tied his feet to the floor. <laughs> I was a little nervous, that's all. I think it scared me. <laughs> uh, you were scared, Mr. Beery? Well, I, I guess I can go home now. I've seen everything. It's been swell working with you again, Mr. Berry, and I, I hope we can do it again real soon. Now, just a minute, Mickey. Before we go home, there's something I'd like to say about the product behind this theater. Lux Soap. It may not be news, Mr. DeMille, because, well, I think I've told you before that Lux Soap has been my regular complexion care for a long time. I haven't changed a bit, except that I think I like it better than ever. Mm, just keep right on liking it, Faye. And that shouldn't be hard where Lux Soap is concerned. What play are you going to have here next week, C.B.? A story about Hollywood, Wally. Oh. The play is called Stand In. And our stars are Warner Baxter and Joan Bennett. Walter Wanger made the motion picture from a story by Clarence Buddington Kellen. And next Monday night, you'll hear Warner Baxter as the banker who tries his hand at producing motion pictures. And Joan Bennett as the stand-in who stands out and becomes more important than the star. It's a play right out of our own front yard with plenty of thrills and excitement. Well, I think you must have picked that one out for me, Mr. DeMille. I, I think it'll be a great, great show. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. If this is for acting, the producers would all have cast like you. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States has proclaimed the month of April Cancer Control Month. Hundreds of lives are saved annually by knowledge of the facts about cancer. You may enlist in this battle, a vital part of the national health defense, by writing to the American Society for the Control of Cancer, 350 Madison Avenue, New York City. Free information is available there or from a unit of this society in your local community. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Warner Baxter and Joan Bennett in Stand In. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Faye Ray is appearing in the Columbia picture Adam Had Four Sons. Heard in tonight's play were Verna Felton as Beulah, Griff Barnett as Steward, Lou Merrill as announcer, Sidney Miller as Cliff, Wally Mayer as Gail, Warren Ash as Pete, and Jack Carr as groom. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>